All right, what's up and welcome back to the channel. For those of you who do not know, I'm working on this 2004 350Z project and it is LS swap. So it's the 5.3. This is a 5.3 from a Silverado, I think, or some shit. I will be putting the LS1 car intake on there to try to clean everything up, but today I'm going to be working on the wire harness. I'm going to be doing the standalone wire harness and trying to make it clean. That might be in a separate video where I clean everything up, but I want to go through the basic process of doing the standalone harness. I do have a video on here already of doing the standalone for this truck. This truck is a 2000, uh, a 2000 minus a couple of years, so it's a 98 Ford Ranger. Methanol injected uh, turbo six liter in the Ranger. So it's a VS Racing 7875 and it goes kind of fast, but not fast enough yet. So it's been 11 three and a quarter mile a few times, but we're trying to make it go a little bit faster. But that's not what today's video is about. Today's video is going to be about the wire harness. So let's get started on this thing. So, tools we're going to need a wire cutter. You probably use channel locks, pliers, whatever you need. I'm going to use a flathead. I'm going to use a tin snips because there's a lot of grown men out there that like to cry when you cut wire with tin snips. So we're going to do that again in this video like I did on my last one. A pen, some tape, wire cutters. We'll use a little nippy nippy, some tape for marking. Your diagram, which you can get this from lt1swap.com. I'm actually just going to be using it straight off of the laptop this time instead of printing. And your favorite juice box. All right, so first thing we're going to do is lay out the harness. Kind of, uh, it I don't know, it helps me to kind of lay it out as it would, as it would be on the vehicle. So this is your PCM fuse box, everything over on this side on the driver's side, and then you got your big wad that comes over. This little split is going to be on top of the intake. If you're visualizing this, this is on top of the intake. Here you have your knock sensor wiring plug. You have your map sensor here. And then this little section that goes over to the back side, you have your oil pressure and you have your cam sensor. So this is going to go down in the back of the engine. Oil pressure cam sensor. You have a ground. And then this goes back to the transmission. This is sliced off of this harness. I'm not going to be using the transmission setup because this is going to be a manual transmission. So down the passenger side, you have another ground. And then this comes over. This is like your AC accumulator. This is going to come down underneath and go to your uh, O2 sensor so that you have a front and a rear O2 sensor. So this is going to come down and around back by the exhaust and then go all the way back for your O2 sensors. This little section is going to come up here and then this is go to your map sensor. Back down from the big wad over to here we have your injector number one, injector number three, coil pack, injector five, injector seven. Over on the passenger side it actually comes down around over here and back forward. But you have a similar setup. You have injector 8, injector 6, coil pack, injector 2, g -g 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 -g, injector 4, injector 2. You do have a couple other sensors up front here. This would be like your EVAT purge solenoid sensor. And then you have throttle position sensor and idle air control valve plugs. So this one you're not going to need. These two you'll keep. And then you do have one other section here. This is your coolant temp sensor, which comes down around the front driver's side of the block. You have a ground, and then this comes like underneath over, actually like underneath the crank pulley. And then you have some other air conditioning stuff. And then this eventually goes all the way back down to the passenger side by the starter. That's your crank position sensor plug. So that's just kind of, that's just kind of how it's laid out. So if you want to keep it laid out in position so you kind of understand where everything is, that's not a bad idea. So now I'm going to go through and basically cut all of the loom off. All the loom, all of the tape. So what I like to do when I do this is if you get to a section where you have loom that's going to one sensor, plug, don't cut that stuff off. So like this one that comes out here, don't even worry about it. We're going to be taking this one off anyways. 
Don't worry about that little guy. But like this section, for example, it's got a bunch of different wires in it. So you're gonna wanna completely open this up, take this loom off. But if you get down to the one plug there, you don't need to worry about taking that stuff off. Again, over here, take this section off because you have multiple sets of wiring. But when you get down to the one little plug, this is like for the air conditioning. If you're not keeping it, don't worry about it because that's gonna go anyways. I'm gonna take the loom off of here, but when I get down to the one, one plug, I'll probably just keep the wire. All right, so I have the harness unloomed pretty much down as far as I'm gonna go now. So what I also do is I save all of the loom pieces because you can reuse these to go over these sections because a lot of sections you're gonna keep intact, you're just removing some wires. So it makes sense to just take the loom off, take the wires out that you need out, and then put the loom back on. So that works pretty well. But you can see here's the, the big wad. We'll keep that reference. And you can see down here, I just kept the loom on all the injector wiring because this is basically gonna be untouched. So this section here with these two sensors, the TPS and idle air control, just left the loom on there because I'm not gonna touch that section. But this section, I'm gonna be pulling some wires out. So I took the loom off. Same thing down here, I unloomed this, took the loom off here because I'm gonna be removing wires, but like the ground and these individual sensors, sensor plugs, I don't need to unloom that. Okay, next we're gonna to wanna to open up this harness so we can actually get the, the wires out of here because there's some wires we're gonna to have to remove. I kinda of went ahead and did some of this already, but you can see these little clips right here. You just wanna squeeze these clips together and then pull them out and you have clips on both sides and they're very brittle because they're pretty old but you just squeeze these little tabs in and then pull them out and this whole plastic piece will come off and if it doesn't come off just yank really hard it'll break you'll get it next these colored pieces need to come off you'll have a red and a blue or you'll have a blue and a green so one word of advice I would say is to maybe take some tape or just write on it with a marker and mark what color this thing is. So you know when you're doing it or you could just do them one at a time and leave the colors on. But I'm probably just gonna pull them off and I'll mark the color on it so I know what color they are because the wiring diagram you're looking at is gonna have color specific items on it. This next part can be kind of tricky, but right now I'm just using an Allen wrench and I've never used an Allen wrench for this before, but it seems like it works pretty well. So I'm just going to stick the wrench in there. There's a little tab you can push in and I kind of push out while I'm pushing in on the other piece. And it's just anything that's long and skinny you can stick in there. Some of you guys might have something in mind for that, but uh, Anything will work, uh, screwdriver or anything really. Anything you can get in there to push on these little tabs and get these things out of here. So now that we have this exposed, all these little plugs are held in by these little white tabs here. So you can even do this with a finger. So if I'm looking at, say this number 59, wire, this white wire, or this yellow wire here, I can just kind of pull up on that that little tab and push this thing right out and now this this wire will come loose and you can just pull it right out. So when I said the number before, it's maybe a little bit hard to see but there's numbers in order underneath so you'll reference the color of the plug and the number for which wires you're going to pull out. All right, so to look at that again, there's a little white tab on the inside of here and a little white tab there. So, and again, like I said, I'm using a really kind of a weird tool, but it's something that works and who really cares if it's the right thing to do because you can get it off pretty quick and there's no point in, in getting emotional about it if it works, right? So I usually, I'm the type of guy that just kind of grabs whatever I have laying around. If it works, it works and I don't really care. All right guys, so I'm a little bit into this project now and I thought of something and, and I thought of something and I wanted to kind of put it at the beginning of the video as I'm going through this. And I just wanted to say, if you're new to this and you are thinking about possibly doing it, but you're intimidated by wiring and electrical and it's something that frustrates you or whatever, 
I would encourage you to try it. Just try it. You don't have to have a strong understanding of electronics to do this. You don't have to have uh, be good at it. I mean, maybe a little bit of patience is going to help. But as far as how this works, it's not complicated at all. I think people overthink it and they see, like they'll go on some Facebook page and they'll see some guy having problems with his wiring harness and it's like, every single wire torn apart and thrown in a ball on top of the engine and the thing started on fire and he's having a hell of a time getting it started and people see that and they're like, whoa, I don't want to do that. But what you don't see is all of the people that are actually doing it like this and they're doing their own harnesses and it's like flawless. It just works and they're not complaining about it or having any issues. So you see a lot more of the people struggling than a lot more of the people that are having success with it. So I would encourage you to try it. You're not gonna be out anything really, except maybe a day of your time and a couple beers, unless you drink wine, which is cool too. My wife drinks wine. So a lot of times when you buy your engine and stuff, it, it comes with the harness and the computer already. So you're really not out anything and you might save yourself, you know, $600 from buying a different harness. So. What I wanted to show you guys, so this harness right here, as, as we sit, before I unloomed it, basically that's as far as I got, this harness was running that car over there, the 350Z with the 5.3 in it. And I literally just had this thing plugged into the computer, flopped on top of the engine, and this was hooked up. There's a ground, there's a bundle of 12 volt positives, which are ignition and constant, a bundle there hooked up to a jumper cable and I had the grounds hooked up to a jumper cable. I mean, that's how simple this is. In theory, that's how simple this whole thing is. You have a ground, you got a bunch of positives, your computer tells it what to do. As long as you got power and you got ground, computer does the talking and everything runs. All right, so this bundle of wires that I referenced before, these are all gonna go to 12 volt sources. So there's two orange wires that are gonna be uh, like PCM power, continuous power sources, those are going to go to battery constant. And then these pink wires, all these pink wires are 12 volt ignition positive sources. So these are what power your coil packs, all of your injectors, every single one has an individual wire. These were all cut off of this plug. And I, I kind of already did this because I, like I said, I ran this harness on that car before. So there's two grounds that I cut off. Those are right here. And all of the 12 volt pink positives, I kind of have in a bundle right here. And then these two orange wires were just in the same terminal on this plug. So these are already cut off. So next what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna look through the diagram and I'm gonna look at all of these wires on here. Some of these wires are gonna be used, some are gonna be removed, uh, like this thick, purple wire, that's gonna to go to the starter. So that's actually the to the starter relay. So I know I'm gonna use that one. And there's a few different wires here that are gonna to go to external sources. So one's for TCC brake switch, which is like hooked up to your brake and it disables your torque converter. Uh, I probably don't even need that one because it's gonna be manual transmission, but if you wanted to do that, that's what you would do. You're gonna have like a malfunction indicator lamp, so an MIL light. You're gonna have your OBD2 port. One of your serial data wires is gonna come out of here. So I'm gonna go through and check for continuity from the plug, on the, from the ECU plug to this plug. Look at the wiring, see what I wanna keep, mark them, and then snip them off. All right, so pretty. here's pretty much your go-to for the wiring harness information that you're going to need. So go to lt1swap.com and there's a whole bunch of information on this website here. So then if you go down to wiring harness modification information, click on that bad boy, you're going to get all kinds of goodies. So now I'm going to go to this 99 to 2007 Vortec 485360 harness wiring info. There's tons of info here. And then I'm just going to go down and find the, the harness that applies to me. So there's a lot of other information on here, but what I want to do is find my harness information. So I'm going to go to this 9902 pinout with the blue and red connectors. And this is the information that I'm going to be using during this. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find all these blocks that are highlighted like this, wires that are needed to go to external connection for standalone. So you'll see we have the blue harness, blue connector information. I'm going to go find all this light blue stuff here, and this is what's going to go to the external sources. So as I said, the pink, pink and orange wires, those are your battery and ignition voltage wires. You have TCC brake switch, which I'm not going to use in this one, but that's a purple wire out of that connector. So basically, you're just going to go through down here and then find the 58 would be a good one. So I'll start with 58. 58 dark green serial data OBD2 port. I'm going to go to the PCM harness connector, and then I'm going to find the wire. So I'll show you guys how to do that. But other than that, that's what I'm going to start with is these light blue wires, all of the yellow wires, all of these yellow connections are going to be ones that we can completely remove from the harness. So going from the PCM connector, you don't need them. You can completely take those wires out of the harness. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the serial data OBD2 port wire. All right, so one tool I didn't mention but is very helpful is the multimeter with the continuity buzzer. So I love using this thing. It is so helpful. So basically anytime you have continuity between one source to another, it's going to beep. So you don't even have to look at it. So I'm going to find, right now I'm going to find pin 58. Pin 58 is on the bottom side here, the blue plug. And it's a green wire. It's marked with number 58 on it. So I'm going to take one lead here and I'm going to touch that onto the number 58 serial data wire. And then you can just start probing around. And I, I found it before, but when I touch this here, I know I have found my OBD2 serial data plug wire. So it's going to be in the top section of this harness. So I'm going to take this little plug off. And this was just how the harness came to me when I got it. So. I'm going to take that same thing, find continuity. There it is. So that's my wire. I know that this top wire here on this plug, this green one, is for my OBD2 serial data wire. So I'm going to take this thing, cut it out of the harness, and then I'll grab some tape, tape it up, and then I'll mark it OBD2. So now I got that one marked. So I'm basically just going to follow the same process for all the other wires. I'm going to start with all the external sources. Some are going to be on these other plugs and some are going to be on this C connector. And once we have them all identified, then we can snip the rest out. All right, so just to show you guys this, I'm going to do on the red plug, number nine, fuel pump relay control. So that's going to be the next wire. And I just want to show you guys this in real time. So I'm going to look the number one through whatever is over here so i'm going to look at number nine on the red plug and it looks like it's a, a green white wire and it does say dark green white on the diagram so i'm going to take this probe and i'm going to put it on the number nine or what i believe to be the number nine <clears throat> and i'm just going to start probing around in here i'm going to find every wire that looks like it's a dark green and white and we'll just go and start poking around. Okay, so there you go, my third poke. Some of the wires look kind of the same. So I found which wire is gonna be the fuel pump trigger. So I'll just cut that one off and we'll throw some tape on it. I'm just going to label it F pump, F low pump, and that's pretty much, pretty much it for that one. So, I mean, that's how long it takes to find each one. So now I'm just going to go through the rest of the harness and get them all labeled, and then we can start the process of removing things. But that's pretty much what you would do. I just, it's real easy. Just continuity buzzer, poke around, find it, cut it, label it, and you're done. And one little tidbit as I'm taping up this tack signal wire. So this tack signal was on the red plug and it was the number 10 pin. 
What I just want to add is when I did my other harness, it was off of the green plug, I believe it was, and the number 10 pin didn't have anything in it because it was from a newer year, and the newer plug didn't have a tack signal, a tack signal in it. So what I had to do was just find a different white wire and plug it into the number 10 slot. So it just took one out that I didn't use and then popped it in there and then ran it to my tack signal. So just something to add for you guys because this one's going to be a little bit different. So I'm just going to label this as tack and we're done. All right, so next thing we're going to do is start pulling wires out of the harness, out of the plugs. So I'm going to take the blue plug. First one I'm going to find, just sort of going right down the list, is pin number 23. Pin number 23 says it's the... EGR ground, it's a purple wire, so you find 23. It's gonna come around to the other side and use some type of a tool to lift this up, or you could use your fingernail or whatever you wanted and then push the pin out. You'll see it's just that easy. And now you can take this purple wire and just pull it right out, right out of the harness and set that thing off to the side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go down the list and I'm gonna pull every one of these out. So the next one I have is the 25. It's a tan wire. I'm just gonna use my little probie here and push on that one and push it right out. That one's on number 25. And then the next one's gonna be number 28. I'm just gonna use a finger again and push it right out. So I'll just keep doing that, go right down the list and get all these wires pushed out. Push, pushed out, pushed out. So this may be where people kind of lose it a little bit. So now that we got all these big, uh, this big wad that's connected, disconnected from the red plug now, just gonna kind of keep these together and then start to pull them away from the rest of the harness. But as you pull it away, keep the remaining bundle together and do this in small sections. So now we have a small bundle here and this is what we remove just from the one plug. So these wires are all gonna be taken out and this is what we're left with, this nice little really tight bundle here. So then as you go through and work these things out and try to pull them through the harness, take a little bit of tape. Masking tape is nice because it's easy to take back off. And then just kinda of work these all the way through and start working these things out of the harness. Work them out a little bit. Tape a section off. And some of this harness is going to be stuck together, so you're going to have to kind of fluff the thing. And you know where all the tape was, you have to kind of pull it. You can hear it's all stuck together. You have to kind of pull it apart. Like this bundle was really stuck together. You want it separated nice and loose so you can actually go through and start pulling all these wires out of here. So we'll do this one. See all these wires are loose. So we want to pull all these away. See all this? It's like stuck together. So you want to break all this adhesive crap off of there from where it was stuck and taped together. Then you can kind of loosen up all these extra wires and pull them off to the side. Find the ones that are stuck and then just pull them over. Be kind of careful, but, and I'm intentionally being kind of quick and seemingly careless here so you guys can kind of see that it's, it's not this big intimidating thing. Obviously don't rip on it and like be crazy and too hard about it, but I remember the first time I ever did this, I went, I did every single wire just one by one through the whole harness and it took so long to do it. So now that all these other wires are out and off to the side, I can take this little bundle here and keep this up and we'll start to work this end through the harness. And then it keeps everything kind of laid out and you don't get anything mixed up. So now this, war well, this harness is still with the same one. See there, I missed one. Now we can just pull it back through. And there you go. So we got this one we're starting to work on, bundled up nice. This one we're starting to work on, 
I'm just gonna keep pulling it through. And some of them you may have to pull through individually. Um, some are gonna go up to these plugs, some are gonna go the rest of the way through the harness to the other plugs. You're also gonna have situations like this where you have this like uh, AC pump, AC clutch switch. It'll be green going to the ECU, but then you're gonna have a black coming out and then the black actually comes back to these little goober grounds right here where there's a bunch of grounds wires coming in. So when those come back, just trace it to the plug, follow it back, follow the ground back to here, and then just snip the thing off. All right, so it's starting to look like an absolute mess right now, but if we kind of consolidate everything back to where it, where it was supposed to be, we have this coming up to the rear, which is gonna be for the O2 sensors. And we have the ground in the back. Here is where the cam sensor and oil plug are. And then we have this section going over to the passenger side injector bank and map sensor. So it's a little out of position right now. But what I wanted to show you is I also went ahead and all this wiring is for the transmission. So this is not going to be a harness for an electronically controlled transmission. So this is just was pulled up through the harness and went back over to the rear where it was cut off before. So I went to this one of these little plugs here. So I just pulled this all through the harness. Now I'm going to follow this all the way back to the ECU plugs. And then I'm just going to de-pin these wires from the plugs. And then I should be pretty much done with this. Just about. And then I'll tape it back up. So now the removal of this box, if you just wanted to slice it off, that would work. But uh, some of these are going to be power sources that are going to go to other things. And you'll find them as you come through. So you'll clip one off and then you can trace it back to here, like the transmission, for example. So this was another set of wires that came up. It doesn't go back to the PCM, but it does come up to this, this box up here. So just been pulling these wires back through. And you know, if you didn't snip it off and label it as an external source, then it's, it's somewhere else in the harness that you're not gonna be using. And you can, Cut it off, but just to verify it, I want to go through and pull them all back. These were pulled back from the transmission wiring. So now all I have left on here is one little ground. And just to make sure that I get it cut off at the right spot, I'll follow it all the way back through the harness. You can kind of get an idea of how I'm, how I'm following this here. Just kind of chase it all the way through, don't let go of it. And then you can trace it all the way back to this, this little bundle here and then snip it off. So we can rip this thing back through the harness. And then we'll be able to completely remove this whole box here. Everything else was accounted for and labeled or we know the source that it came from when we removed it so we can chuck it in our pile and that should be pretty much everything okay so i went back through and taped everything up now so this is pretty much a completed harness aside from doing the loom so i didn't loom it yet because i'm planning on doing something different but i wanted to do it for this video to show you guys how to put the harness together so all the wiring is removed i do have all my sources identified so this would be for the PCM power constant and uh, accessory 12 volt switched you have a tax signal you have vehicle speed signal fuel pump signal wire check engine light OBD2 starter wire ground this is for oil and then this is the 12 volt ignition sources for all the coil packs and injectors everything else so the layout is still the same Let's see why we never had to pull the uh, loom off of this wiring here. So we have all the injectors. We have a nice small bundle here and all your other sensors. So knock sensors, oil, cam sensor, ground. That goes back to O2 sensors. And then back over here, you got map sensor, all your injectors and coil packs, ground again. Then we come back over to the front, O2 sensor. And this was the MAF, but all I left here was two wires, the tan and black for the intake air temp. Because this is going to go to an external intake air temp source because I'm not going to run a MAF sensor. But I did leave the MAF wiring inside here. I just taped it inside this loom. So like this P2 
pink, black, and yellow. The MAF wiring is still in there if I do decide I want to add it back in later, just in case. So then, this other section that comes around the front, again we have throttle position and idle air control. And then we have starter wiring, ground coming up here, and just a single wire that comes back down to starter and crank sensor. So nice small little bundle, just have to put the loom back on it. And the only other thing we could really do here is, <clears throat> or we would really need to do here yet is add uh, a fuse box and a couple of relays for this. So that would be in a different video. I'm going to do something completely different with this harness. I might try to actually separate all of the sensors and everything completely out of this bundle and then run everything separately. So my thought with the car is when I put the car intake back on it is to kind of like hide all the wiring as best I can and run each sensor individually back to wherever I decide to put the computer. So one thing to consider with this harness, or this is basically designed to have you know, your intake here and then your big bundle coming over to a power source and your computer over here. So I didn't like it that way when I did it on this truck. So basically what I did, I do have a bundle coming over here, but this is just the power sources that are coming, like the ignition 12 volt positives and the signal wires that are coming to the gauges. But then all the PCM wiring, I flipped over the top and I ran it back over on this backside that would normally be going down to um, the cam sensor and the oil sensor. So the rest of the wire harness is coming back over here and then it comes underneath through my firewall. So if we were to look at that from this angle, basically this stuff is going to the fuse box and all of this wiring here, I flipped over and then instead of this small bundle here, I flipped it over the top of this and then went back into the firewall. So you got, you can be creative, kind of do whatever you want to do with it, but that's this one, just a basic DIY standalone LS swap harness. Thanks for watching.